Hi, this is Jeff from the Icebox Radio Theater cutting in here real briefly to ask for your help. We need your assistance to make this station and this radio theater better. And to that end, we have established a permanent a survey at our website. That's at iceboxradio.org. Just go to that website and you can find the survey link across the top of the page there. And uh, go to that link and fill out the survey. It should only take a couple of minutes. And it just gives us a little bit of information about you and also about your preferences concerning audio drama and podcasting. Again, that website, iceboxradio.org. And just click on the survey link to participate today. Thank you so much. And now let's return to the stories. There's an old saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Of course, I never was much for old sayings. And sometimes I really think I'm paying for it. For example, I should have been better in the friend department. I have plenty of close friends up here in Icebox, Minnesota, not the least of whom is my partner Mary and my, well, whatever you want to call him, Bo. But truth be told, I held out on them in ways a friend never should. And one time, it nearly cost me everything. Interested? Pull up a stool and I'll tell you about it. Yes, it's Rum Runner Sue, starring Billy Joe Cones. Mystery and adventure in the northern wilderness of Prohibition America. We'll be back with tonight's exciting story right after this. The place, Icebox, Minnesota, a tiny village on Rainy Lake, the island's spotted paradise that forms the border between the United States and Canada, between the great social experiment of prohibition and the legal production and distribution of lady liquor. Just off Main Street sits a tiny establishment called the Deacon Seat, home and throne room to the queen of these parts, the owner-operator of beauty in checkered flannel and dungarees, Susan Conti. Or, as she's known in these parts, Rum Runner Sue. If I made it sound like I had no friends in the world, don't worry. I have plenty. As a matter of fact, I felt like I could have done with about half as many friends at the beginning of this story. My bar, the Deacon Seat, was jammed. Lars Olstead had just paid his logging crew for a clear cut they'd finished about four miles up the shore, and they had descended upon my place like a swarm of hungry, thirsty, and odorous locusts to get good and fortified with flapjacks and liquor before heading over to Madame Rose's Joy House. I was turning out breakfast as fast as I could while my partner Mary was doing her best to make the loggers behave. Oh! I saw you reaching for my backside, Sven. You do that again and I'm going to break all your fingers. Oh, but Miss Mary, I didn't touch you. Intent is nine-tenths of the crime. Sue taught me that. Ah, but why don't you let me take you away from all this noise and work? Marry me. We can be together always. Ain't you already married? Twice, but this time it will be different. (laughs) Rumor is you've still got a wife back in Stockholm. Sure, but she don't understand me. Ow! What was that for? To make it clear, I do understand you. Now keep your hands to yourself or you'll be doing your drinking outside in the snow. Oh, behave. See that you do. Excuse me. Only available seats are at the bar. I'm looking for Susan. Is she working today? Today and every day. Kind of goes along with owning the place. Susie owns all this. Oh, that's wonderful. Beats a hole in the head. What do you want to talk to her for? Oh, I'm an old, well, a friend, I guess. Well, come along with me, friend, I guess. Sue's in the kitchen. I'm Mary, by the way. Harry. Harry Smith. Sue never talks about her friends much. You knew her in Chicago? Chicago and St. Paul before it. Sue and I were very close. Oh, really? Who the hell ordered an omelet, Mary? What does this look like, the Ritz? Oh, Susan. Visitor for you. Later, we gotta get this crew fed before... Susie! Huh? What the hell? It's gonna be all right now. I'm here. You're here. 
That kiss sure made it look that way. It's gonna be all right, darling. Your husband has come back to you. My what? It was a beautiful wedding ceremony at the cathedral in St. Paul. Really? Reception at the St. Paul Hotel. Even the governor was there. You're kidding me. God's own truth. I just wish I hadn't had to leave her all by her lonesome these past few months. But I'm back now, right, sweetheart? Um, Susan, why didn't you tell me any of this stuff? I mean, I thought you might have been rich, but I didn't... I am not rich. No. We were poor as church mice. Her folks, on the other hand, yowza! Yeah, say, Mary, I wonder if you could come back to the kitchen for a minute? What for? I want to stay here and get to know your better half. Yeah, right. Come on. What's in the kitchen? Stay right there. Don't move. I have to get you something. All right. I'll be waiting right here, my love. Come on, Mary. Susan Conti, you've been holding out on me. Don't be ridiculous. That is not my husband. Well, then what are we hiding in the kitchen for? Toss him out on his ear. No. He's familiar somehow. I know him. I, I just have to figure out from where. I knew it was too good to be true. What do you mean? All that fairy tale stuff about rich parents and getting married in the cathedral. Well, that part's sort of true. You mean the governor really was at your wedding reception? That was no big deal. He went to a lot of weddings. Susan! What? It's like I don't even know you. You know I don't like to talk about my past. Well, your past just walked through the door looking like a million dollars, if you don't mind me saying. He's not my past, and he's certainly not my husband. God, he is familiar, though. The haircut, the suit. If he's not yours, do you mind if I make a play? What? Howdy, officer. Hello, yourself. Oh, no. Is that who I think it is? Yep. Your boyfriend just walked in on your husband. Don't call him that. You mean Bo ain't your boyfriend now? Lord, Sue, you got the most complicated love life. Ugh, come on. Hello, Sue. Hey, Bo. Did you meet Harry? Not officially. John Beauregard, County Sheriff. Harry Smith, at your service, Sheriff. What can we do for you, Bo? Uh, Sheriff. Well, a few of the loggers happened by the office just now, told me what was going on over here, and I decided to come see for myself. What, that little Sue is actually married? It's true. I got the ring to prove it. Funny she's not wearing one. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. What gives, Susie? He calls you Susie. That just sounds wrong. That's it. Bo, sit. Mary, get Bo a ham sandwich. It's ten in the morning. You're having an early lunch. You come with me. Ooh, where to, darling? I have an apartment upstairs. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I guess it has been a while, hasn't it? Hmm. There's three guns and a dozen knives hidden in that apartment. I know where they are and you don't. I'd advise you to keep that in mind before you try anything, darling. Mm, spicy one, isn't she, Sheriff? She sure is. Just full of surprises. Mary, sandwich. Harry, move. All right, what's your game? Whatever do you mean, darling? I'm just your ever-loving hubby come home for a visit. No, I know you, you slicked-up weasel. I just can't remember from where, and when I figure it Don't out... Don't bust a girdle thinking about it, toots. Toots! Look, I'll make this easy. You got a pretty sweet deal up here. Nice place, regular cash flow, and from the steam coming out of that sheriff's ears, I'm thinking you got him well in hand, too. Meaning what? Meaning you got yourself a nice setup. Be a shame if these fine people knew about your past, wouldn't it? I have no secrets from these people. Sure, sure. I'm sure they know all about what you did for Al Capone and who Pierce Conti was and what happened to him in prison. They know about my Chicago friend, Al. You would do well to remember him, too. Oh, I'm keeping him in mind. Don't worry. That's the reason for my visit. Chicago's getting a little rough, see? Some of us small fry got to work twice as hard just to make a living. Uh, looking around, I'm thinking you got a few bucks to spare. Wait a minute. Cop, Coop, Coop, Koopchek. That's it, I got it. Fred Koopchek. Took you long enough. Hell, I didn't even use a disguise. Con man, right? 
Used to work with the Irish mob out of Moline doing petty grifter stuff. Ah, you would be, madam. I was the number one grifter in the Midwest back in the day. I remember. Al put up a stake for you to run the wire con on the Lonigan gang out of New York. Oh, my masterpiece. That stupid Mick still don't know what hit him. So what's your game here? Ain't no game, Sue. Like I said, the whole enterprise is getting rougher. More gangs and competition. Feds are cracking down. Did you hear what they did to Bonnie and Clyde? These poor kids didn't have a chance. It's like a war out there. I ain't a fighter. Oh, what a terrible plight. Tell me why I should care. Yeah, you shouldn't. Not unless I tell all your Claude Hopper friends about what you did in Chicago. I'm a pretty good judge of people. That little girlie worships the ground you walk on. And John Law's not too far off. How would they feel if they knew everything? I said it before. I have no secrets from these people. Just an honest innkeeper, huh? All right, then. Let's go have a chat with them. Wait. What do you want? Canada's right over that lake, right? A boat ride be nice. Maybe a friend with a car to meet me on the other side. Oh, it's say five G's to get me started on a new life. From what I hear, you collect that every week. What do you say, Sue? For old time's sake. <sighs> Mary, good. Hello, Bo. What's got you bothered? I need to talk to Sue. Is she here? Uh, up in the apartment, I think. Go on up. Come with. Come on, Bo. You think you need a chaperone? Mary. What? What is it? I need you to come up because I need you to be a witness. Why? What's going on? I need to bring Sue in for questioning. Always better when there's a third person there. Why are you questioning her? I shouldn't... I, I can't. Bo. Because that Harry Smith guy is dead. <gasps> Gunshot wounds. I need to talk to Sue about it, and it needs to be official. But you can't think Sue had anything to do with it. I gotta talk to her, Mary, and it's all got to be now. Fine. I hope you know how silly you sound. Sue couldn't have had anything to do with this. Don't you think I know that? Sue? Bo's here. Sue? Stay here. Come on. You need to come with me down to the station. What is it? What's wrong? You guys keep a lot of cash in the safe in there? Not a lot. Why? Well, whatever was in there is gone now. Safe's open and empty. Where's Sue? Gone. And it looks like she packed up and left in a hurry. You can't think. I'm not thinking. I'm working. Come on. There she is. Hello, Madam Rose. How have you been, sweetie? We've missed you around here. I missed you all, too. We're just so busy over at Sue's place, I No don't... worries, sweetheart. I'm glad for you. Really. Really? Sometimes I feel guilty about leaving you and the girls. Then come visit more often. That's one of the reasons I called you. I wondered. I, I can't stay long with Sue gone. I Don't worry to. about that now. Come on back to the office. We'll have a sherry. Can I go say hello to the girls first? Later, sweetie. There's something. Well, just come on. So what's so all-fired important that... <gasps> Sue! Hello, Mary. I don't think anyone saw her come in. Good. Thank you, Rose. Any time. I'll go tend to my business and leave you two to chat. Rose, she can't be here. The police... We've got lookouts all over the property. Courtesans can be regular Pinkertons when they need to be. Just keep your voices down. Not all the girls are in on the plot. Sue? What happened? Are you all right? You tell me. You're the one spending time with Bo. Yeah, to be interrogated. Lord, that man can ask the same question over and over again. Comes with being a cop. What did he say? Harry Smith's dead. Yeah, I know. You know? Uh-huh. And his name's not Harry Smith. It's Fred Kupchak. 
I knew him in Chicago, confidence man and racketeer with one of the minor mobs. You know the nicest people. No one would ever accuse Fred of being nice. He came up here to extort money and safe passage out of the country. He was staying at the Richardson place. You know that rich family only comes up here in the summer? That sleaze knows the Richardsons? I don't think so. He probably just knew about the house and Jimmy the back door to get in. I went to the house to give him what he asked for and found him dead. You were the one that found him then? Yeah, earlier today. Was it you who told Bo? No. One of his deputies showed up just after I did. I had to slip out the back way to avoid being seen. Oh, Sue, what's going on? Bo thinks he cleaned out the safe and skipped the country. That's not off the table yet. But first I have to figure out what's going on. Here, here's all the cash from the safe. Put it back, but don't tell Bo. It's best he thinks I skipped town for right now. All right. Next, do you think Madame Rose would loan you that old car of hers? It's her pride and joy, but it wouldn't hurt to ask. Good. Do so. And then you and I have to run a couple of errands. I gotta figure out what's happening here fast. There it is. You see any deputies? No. It looks pretty quiet. You hide the car good? Real good. In that clump of trees back there. I still wish you would have stayed back with the car. No way! Second set of eyes, remember? Okay. Let's get across this field real quick and in by the house. Don't want to be out in the open too long. Check. Wow. Sneaking around like this really gets the blood pumping. Keep your voice down. Oh no. What is it? Sheriff put a lock on the door. We won't be able to get inside without breaking in. Maybe we don't need to. Look here. Broken window. I'm not crawling through that. But wait a minute. What is it? The glass fell on the inside. That means it was struck from the outside. Someone busted it to get in? No. There's still too many shards stuck in the frame for someone to crawl through. Besides, he'd have to be your size or smaller to fit through that window. Uh, thank you? No one came through this window, but I think someone might have shot through it. So the killer is out here and shot what's-his-name in the kitchen? That tracks. And it means, careful where you step. What? Why? A lot of wet ground here, and I think... Yes, there. What'd you find? Footprints. Someone stood right here and faced the window. Glory B, would you look at them? That's gotta be a size 15 at least. This gives me an idea. I think it's time we go visit an old friend. Psst! Myrtle! Mary? Keep your voice down. I need to talk to you. I have to change the linens on the third floor, then get ready to serve dinner. Why are you hiding like that? Hey! Uh... Sorry, I just had to get you out of sight for a moment. Come on back here in the linen closet. What's this all about? Oh, you. Hello, Myrtle. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Miss Susan, but I'd just as soon not speak to you if that's all the same. The last time I talked to you, I almost got fired. Oh no, what happened? Didn't she tell you? I let her into a guest room and just about put myself in the soup line. So if you'll excuse me. Actually, I did have one tiny little question. If Mr. Walker finds me talking to you, he'll fire me for sure. We were just wondering if any guests checked in recently. Large ones, a big man maybe, well-dressed and looking pretty tough. Well, all right. There is this character in 212. Gotta be seven feet tall if he's an inch. Does he have big shoes? How should I know? Excuse me. Well, that wasn't much help. I don't know. It follows that a seven-foot man would need big feet to get around. And she did tell us his room number. Yeah, but how are you going to get in? You're going to pick the lock. What? what? What are you talking about? I can't pick locks. I had a nice conversation with Madame Rose earlier. She told me about all kinds of skills I didn't know you had. Well... Uh, I mean, that is... Oh, shoot. It's okay, Mary. Every time you think you leave something behind, it falls back in your lap. So you can pick locks. Part of my dark past. So I'm not the only one with secrets, then. Hey, I never thought of it that way. Why is it you never ask me about my past? Because, Mary, it's none of my business. 
I kind of tripped right into that one, didn't I? Yep. Amazing. I am definitely keeping that skill of yours in mind. Please don't. It's not something I'm particularly proud of. You know locksmiths need to be able to pick locks, right? It can be part of an honest trade. Well, just don't advertise it around. Last thing I need is another set of criminals asking after my services. So what are we looking for here? Don't know exactly. Clothes are always a good place to start. And our boy does appear to be on the large side. Look at the size of this jacket. He could play for the Green Bay Packers. He could be the Green Bay Packers. And the label, yeah, Chicago. And a fairly nice haberdashery, if memory serves. You think he's a member of Capone's mob? I don't know. I tried to memorize as few faces as possible in those days. But a character like this would be memorable. Gee, thanks, Sue. <gasps> That's real nice of you to say. So do you remember my face now? You danced right below it more than once. Hi, Sam. Long time no see. Yeah. You in town for business? Oh, yeah. I was going to stop by and see you, but uh, things been busy. Sam, I don't know why you're here, but... Going to ask you the same thing. It is my room, after all. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um... Don't strain yourself, Mrs. Conti. I don't got time to chit-chat, so... I'll get to the point. This little birdie helps you run your speak? Uh, yes. Good. She needs to hear this, too. I got a message for you from Al. Why doesn't Al pick up the phone himself? Uh, things have gotten kind of busy for him recently, so I'm speaking for him just the same. You killed Freddy Kupchak. Uh, pardon? You killed Fred Kupchak. He came up here to blackmail you. You panicked and plugged him. I don't understand. It's real simple. Kupchak stepped on the wrong toes down south. On top of that, he made off with something that wasn't his. Then he ran away. Al don't like it when small fry like Kupchak run. So someone had to take care of him. But there's a war with the feds brewing, so you can't just plug a guy like you used to. Gotta have a fall guy give John Law someone to trot out in front of a jury. Eh, this time, that's you. What? You expect her to go along with that? Hey, it speaks! That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Sue, get Capone on the phone. I want to put this gorilla in his place. Hey, I like her! Shut up, you. You think you can come into my town and- Mary, please. Sam, this isn't right. Al wouldn't... I mean... Al's always protected you before, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, he has. But there's more to carry now, Sue. When a truck gets overloaded and then hits a bump, there's always something falls off the back. This time, that something is you. And if she doesn't agree to this? Oh, I wouldn't advise that. Uh, what happens now? Nothing. The gun that killed Freddy is already in your apartment and the cops already been called. They might even get one of them, oh, what do you call it, search warrants to make it all official. And she's just supposed to go to jail? Oh, relax. Al's got contacts on the inside, make it nice and cushy for you. Not to mention, this is Minnesota. You ain't got the chair or noose or nothing here. You'll just have three hots and a cot on the state's bill for... Well, for a little while, anyway. Look pretty at the trial and shed a tear at the right moment you might even get off with probation. Freddy was no big loss. Why, you... Mary? Got it all figured out, haven't you? When did you know Al Capone not to have all the angles figured? Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta ask you to discreetly leave. Don't want the management to see ladies coming out of my room at this hour. I must keep a good reputation, you know? But you can't just... Get, little kitty. Get while the getting's good before I change Al's mind for him. He likes you, Mrs. Conti. He really does. But business is business. And business is going to get done one way or the other.
Do you hear anybody? No. Bo's not here. Not yet. Do you really think he'll arrest you? <sighs> Come on, Mary. We have to put all this cash back in the safe. Were you really gonna buy that Harry character off? His name's Fred, I told you. His name don't matter, Sue. Were you really gonna buy him off? Yes, I guess. I, I don't know. You know, frowning all the time will give you wrinkles. I deserve a few. <sighs> I'm tired of playing with you, Sue. I know I come off as a little immature sometimes, but I really do care about you. And I really want to help if I can. Problem is, I don't know the whole story. You're right. You deserve the whole story. You've been patient long enough. I'm sorry. For what? For... I, I don't know. I guess I just feel sorry is all. <laughs> Kupchak was right. I did grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. The best schools, the best parties. Had a lot of friends whose fathers were senators or worked for the governor or even bigger. We were St. Paul High Society, no denying it. And I guess... Well, I guess that went to my head a little bit. Oh, nonsense. I've known plenty of rich biddies in my time. You're nothing like them. Maybe not now, now that I have learned a few hard lessons. During my sophomore year, I met him at a sorority mixer. Met who? Pierce Conti, my husband. Oh. Prohibition had just been declared and things were getting pretty wild. He had a talent for getting the best bathtub gin and I had a talent for charming the cops, so we became the must-have party couple for every shindig on campus. After Pierce graduated, he got a junior executive position at Montgomery Wards, where his father worked. I quit school, married Pierce, and we settled into the life of a young couple with way too much money. When Pierce got transferred to Chicago, that's when things really kicked off. That's when we met Al Capone. It must have been very exciting. <laughs> it was all a lark to us. But yeah, it was a thrill. Somewhere, though, things took a turn... Pierce had always been good with figures, so he began to help Al's mob with their books. Because the cops never thought to stomp and search me, I became valuable as a courier, moving packages and sometimes cash from one side of town to the other. Wow! You were really in Capone's mob? Yeah. He took a shine to me and made sure Pierce and I always had the nicest things. I wore furs and rode around in touring cars while half the city was standing in the soup line. We thought we were on top of the world. I guess we were. What happened? The bill came due. A shipment had been seized by the police. They were all on the take, of course, but they needed a fall guy to go to jail on account of it being an election year. Al tapped Pierce for that job. Said he'd only serve three months and he'd earn the undying gratitude of the organization. He'd lose his job at Ward's, of course, but Al said he'd bring him on as a bookkeeper full-time and pay him three times as much. So Pierce agreed. He pled guilty and got sentenced to 90 days. Two weeks before he was supposed to get out, a member of a rival gang got Pierce alone in his cell. They figure that son of a bitch bribed a guard to smuggle in the knife. Oh, Sue. After that, well, I didn't know what to do. Mom and Dad had both passed by that time, thank God. We had a summer place up here on the lake. I moved up full time just to get away. After about six months, Al approached me with an idea. Convert the cabin into a speakeasy, and handle shipments a couple times a year. I had nothing else to do, and he was going to pay for it all, so I said yes. <sighs> I guess you know the rest. Can I ask, you ever told Bo any of this? <laughs> he knows I'm a widow. That's about all. I think he's taken a don't-ask-what-you-don't-want-to-know attitude. There's one thing I don't get, though. What's that? Well, I've seen Al visit you. I've heard him talk to you on the phone. He genuinely likes you. And after this business with your husband, I can't see him sending you to jail like that. And for murder yet. Things change. I don't know. Maybe you should call him? I suppose. Honestly, all I'd really like is to be done with the whole mess. The rum running, the speakeasy, all of it. Well, don't say that. At least about the speakeasy. We could just make it a restaurant. First things first. Call Al. 
You're right. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna look around for that gun that big gorilla claimed to have left here. Good idea. Don't touch it, though. Fingerprints. Right. Hi, Sadie, it's Sue. Long distance, please. Chicago, Mohawk 46219. Okay, I'll be waiting, thanks. Radio, okay? Fine. Mary, turn that up! Most law enforcement agency has ever kept the bootlegging legend behind bars. Though Capone still claims his innocence on racketeering charges and moral superiority over the Volstead Act, federal authorities did find a charge for which he has no answer. Tax evasion. What? That's right, the Internal Revenue Boys want to put Scarface Capone behind bars for failing to pay tax on his considerable income. But what seems like a desperate last-ditch effort by the law to lasso the legendary crime figure looks to be working. Federal judges have denied bail twice and seem bent on hearing the Federalis' case. But finally putting Capone behind bars will come at a price. Chicago police report a sharp upswing in gang-related violence as competing mobs attempt to muscle in on Scarface Isle's territory. Sue? It's all lies. What? It's all lies. I knew it. Big Sam's not working for Al. Big Sam is trying to muscle in on Al. I'll bet Fred Kupchak didn't even have a falling out with Capone. I'll bet his problem was with Sam. Didn't Sam say something about Fred taking what wasn't his? Yeah. What do you think it was? No telling. Cash, some evidence, who knows. But whatever it is, I bet Sam's searching the Richardson place for it right now. Okay, but if that's all he wants, why would he try and pin the murder on you? I was part of Al's network. Dollars to donuts, he was going to go send someone up here to take over the whole operation after I went to jail. Take over the deacon seat? It can't happen, Sue. It just can't. It's not going to. We gotta call Bo and get him over to the Richardsons. Did you find the gun? Sitting on the bar. He didn't even bother to hide it. Why would he? Sadie, Sue again. Cancel that long distance and get me Bo, okay? Thanks. Why did I just know you were going to show up here? What's happening? Keep your head down. It's down. Now tell me what's happening. Your boy's in there. Any idea why he's poking around the Richardson summer place? Not exactly. I imagine he's looking for something. Fred Kupchak was staying here. Who the hell's Fred Kupchak? You might know him as Harry Smith, my better half. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Keep your head down. Sorry, but that Smith character. He's a con man from Chicago named Fred Kupchak. I knew him back in the day. Things are getting wild down there, so Fred thought he'd touch me for five grand and hightail it to Canada. He thinks you're rich, does he? Apparently. The large character in there now is also from Chicago. We always called him Big Sam, but I don't know his real name. He killed Fred and aimed to pin it on me. On you? What for? Well, I can talk about that later. First, you have to talk him into giving himself up or, or something. We're preparing for or something now. I got deputies surrounding the house. Does he know you're here? I think so. Shades were closed the second we pulled up, and you can hear that Model A of mine from the next county. He'd have to be deaf to miss it. Just make sure he misses you from here on. Armed? If I remember Big Sam, he never went anywhere without a Tommy gun. All right. You know this guy, Sue. How should we play it? Let me do the talking. I don't know. Bo, please. This is my mess, sort of, and I'd like a chance to clean it up. All right. But I'll need you to unpack that statement later. Oh, don't worry, I'm planning to. Sam? Sam, it's Sue. Sheriff has the house surrounded, Sam. They got your car, too, so no way out except talking. Right cozy with the law, ain't you, Mrs. Conte? You're surrounded, Sam. Why don't you lay down that gun and come talk about it? You really think these local yokels can keep you in a cell? That's a little unkind. Quiet, I'm buttering him up. What do you say, Sam? It's your best chance. Give yourself up. I'll call Al. He'll probably have his best lawyer up here by morning. You'll be on a Chicago train by lunchtime. Are you saying you confessed to the con man's murder? One thing at a time, Sam. 
Local law's right next to you. Why don't you have that chat, and then I'll come out. What's he talking about? Blackmail. If I didn't confess to Kupchak's murder, he was... He was what? He was going to tell you things I should have told you a long time ago. What's going on out there, Mrs. Conti? You in, Sam. Come on out. Have them drop their guns. No way. Can't do that, Sam. You coppers. You're all the same. You drop your guns or I'm going to shoot my way out. Sam, don't be a fool. A fool, am I? I'll show you. Ah! Ah! Oh. Open fire. Fire will. He's down. Cease fire. Cease fire. Are you all right? Are you shot? What do you think? Deacon Seat, Sue speaking. Hello, Songbird. Ow, my God. Thought I'd never hear from you again. Did you get out? Not just yet, but I will. No two-bit tax rap is going to stop Al Capone. I heard what happened up there. I was just calling to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. Shaken, I guess. Did you hear about Big Sam? Oh, sure. I get all the news in here. He wasn't acting on my orders, Sue, I swear. I didn't think he was. What happened exactly? Sprayed a Tommy gun all over the woods and a bunch of sheriff deputies shot him down. He was dead before he hit the ground. Goddamn lieutenants breaking out on their own, I don't understand it. We had a good thing going, didn't we? Everyone making lots of money, the fix was in with the cops. We could have gone on like this indefinite. All it takes is for a couple characters to get greedy and... Well, you know. Yeah. You sound tired. I am tired. Half thinking I'll let my mouthpiece plead guilty. Big house sounds like a nice rest. I don't think it needs to go that far, does it? Nah, I'm just talking, but, uh... Sue, there is one thing. Yes? Uh, Things are gonna be tight for a while. Can't bring no more shipments through your town. Sorry. That's all right. You set me up good, Al. I'll be fine. I'm glad to hear it. It might be a while before we can talk, Songbird. War's brewing. I gotta stay focused here, understand? Of course. If there's anything I can do... You've done enough. Keep your nose clean, huh? Maybe marry that Johnny Law you got on the line or something? Or something. Take care, Alphonse. You too, Songbird. Bo? Thank God, Sue. Someone with a brain in her head. Would you tell these wet nurses around here that I don't need a hospital? Are you being a difficult patient? Of course I am. I shouldn't be a patient at all. You were shot. Twice. Flesh wounds. I can get around just fine with a cane. And as far as this shoulder goes, I'll just be off paperwork for a while. Give Johnson a reason to practice his penmanship, which he desperately needs. Doc Perkins said you need another day or so in the hospital. He doesn't want those wounds to get infected. I know how to keep a wound clean. We didn't have hospitals in the trenches, and none of my boys left the fighting with an infection. Unless you count the clap. Charming. Look, Bo, I need to talk seriously for a moment. Well, all right. What is it? I got a hold of Capone. Big Sam was acting on his own. No orders from the top. Sounds like your friend Al has a discipline problem. He does. And it's going to get worse. Newspapers think he'll go to jail for income tax evasion. Yeah, I heard. Any idea why the Sam character killed Kupchak? No, and I'm not going to dig into it either. Gangsters always have grudges, and a confidence specialist gathers more than most. I imagine they had a falling out at some point, and this was Sam's chance to take revenge. Awful long way to travel to take revenge. Well, that's the thing. I think there's another reason Sam came up here. I think he meant to remove me from the picture so he could take over my import operation. You know the nicest people, Susan. 
Yeah. That's part of what I wanted to talk to you about. Capone and I are finished. He thinks his debt to me has been paid. His debt? You sound surprised. Well, yeah, I always figured you owed him something. No, it was the other way around. I had a husband, Bo. We were young and foolish and used to rub shoulders with a lot of gangsters. My husband did some business with them. Then they asked him to take the fall for a Volstead rap. He was only supposed to be inside for three months. He was... murdered in prison. Jesus. That's why Capone took care of me. Helped me set up the deacon seed, all the rest of it. But it's over now. All of it. Well, Susan, it's for the best. This is a clean start for you. The club has a good trade built up. And people come from all over now. You're free of that rum-running business. and You've got Mary to help you. And, well, maybe you and I could have some serious... Uh, that is... To... <sighs> Damn it. I don't want to have this talk with you from a hospital bed. It's all right, Bo. I understand. And I feel the same way. Do you... Do you mean it, Sue? I mean... I know I'm not a man of many words, but I think you deserve to hear that I love you. I love you too, John. And that's why I have to leave this town. And never come back. This has been Rum Runner Sue for whom the wedding bell tolls. Our play starred Billy Joe Cones as Sue, Trelawney Irwin as Mary. Our special guest star was Timothy Urin, who played Harry and Big Sam. James Yunt played Bo. Diane Adams was Madame Rose. Carice Boyer was Myrtle, the maid. And Justin Kapla played your announcer and Al. Other voices provided by the talented cast. Script written by Jeffrey Adams. Jeffrey also did the editing, sound effects, and partial music for this episode, created with loops from Loop Masters. Some sound effects from the Freesound Project at freesound.org. The song Night on the Docks, provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This program copyright 2023 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Partial funding made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and through donations from our wonderful patrons and listeners. More information at iceboxradio.org.